Hi everybody, welcome back to IndyCar. My name's Gordon Ross, welcome to Sunday's show. It's a beautiful day out here in Partick and it seems like a good time to really start thinking about the, the next few months ahead. I was watching the news briefly this morning before I came out uh, to do some driving lessons and one of the things that jumped out at me straight away was the review of the newspapers which is done on the BBC's um, News24 site every Sunday and on this review of the papers this morning was this screaming headline which said um, SNP could wreck Brexit trade deals. Now, first of all, it didn't say which newspaper it was in and I had the sound down at the time when I was watching this and it just showed an excerpt from this headline SNP could wreck Brexit deal or Brexit trade deals. Now the SNP, as we know, is not in a position to exert any kind of influence at all over, over what happens at Westminster, simply because there's not enough of them and because there is no way that they could influence a vote one way or the other. The only power that the SNP does have is the power to refuse to cooperate with the British government over um, how the Brexit deal, when it's finally done, uh, whether it's accepted by the Scottish and Welsh uh, devolved governments. As we know, at the moment, the Scottish and the Welsh uh, devolved assemblies, both our Parliament and theirs, have fought very successfully and so far managed to extract a lot of powers from the, um, the so-called Brexit Bill. Now, this Brexit Bill is supposed to repatriate the powers uh, which have been residing in uh, in the European Union and repatriate those which are not automatically um, uh, reserved to Westminster. So everything else other than defence, foreign affairs and taxation and benefits should go to Scotland. But it didn't go to Scotland as we know because uh, David Mundell got all these powers at uh, his new HQ at New Waverley. But during the, the, the summit between Mike Russell and uh, David Davis and I think uh, also the, the, the Minister from uh, Wales was at this meeting as well. They have managed to get back not all of the powers, but all except 25 of these so-called um, uh, EU powers which were coming back to Scotland. So far they've got back or agreed that the British will give back everything except 25 of these powers. Now I don't know what the 25 are that are still being fought over uh, at the moment and it seems like the talks didn't come to any particular uh, agreement over these 25, but there is progress there, which is in interesting. The British are prepared to give and take a little bit, but the point is that all of those powers should come to both the, the Scottish and the Welsh parliaments. They should not be in Westminster at all. Even if they have to pass through Whitehall to get here, they should come straight here. But there is no way in which the SNP can spoil any Brexit deal, and absolutely ridiculous to claim it, because the SNP is holding out for the best possible deal for Scottish exports, and they're, they're not wanting to torpedo any deal at all, they just want to make sure the deal is the best possible one that can be got. Now, other things that have happened this week, um, which were slightly alarming, were to do with, uh, actually somebody mentioned this to me the other day, was a thing called the prefer most preferred nation status. Now this is something which uh, Brexit uh, champions go on about. They think this is great. They think a most preferred nation status in the World Trade Organization rules means that you can do especially good deals with countries that you like or with countries whose goods that you really need. Let's say you wanted to buy beef from Argentina. So under the World Trade Organization rules you could say to Argentina we're not going to charge you any tariff at all on your beef if you import it to our country on the basis that you don't charge any tariffs on our goods coming into your country. Now that's the kind of thing that the most preferred nation status you would think would be about. But it's not because during the, the World Trade Organization rules are there to prevent people from, uh, from exerting favoritism and that's what this kind of deal would be. And if you struck a deal like that with Argentina, just as, as an example, you would have to give the same deal to the other people who you trade with under World Trade Organization rules. In other words, they wouldn't be the most preferred uh, nation. They would be one of the most preferred nations in a whole group that you would then have to modify your treaties with.
The whole point of the WTO rules is to make sure there isn't favouritism. And this is something that the British Brexiteers seem to have completely got the wrong way round. They seem to think the most preferred nation status means you can do bespoke deals with all sorts of countries. You can pick and choose and cherry pick. I'm afraid they're wrong. I'm afraid it's going to come and trip them up because if we do leave the EU without a deal and we have to work under the World Trade Organization rules, then we can't just do a brilliant deal with say, America only and not have the same deals in place for the other countries. It's not allowed. There are rules. This is what the, the Brexiteers seem to completely forget. They forgot it when they were dealing with Europe and now they're forgetting it when they're dealing with the World Trade Organization as well. British Tories, particularly far-right Tories, seem to think that rules are for other people. They're inconvenient to the Tories, they don't apply. Well, I'm sorry, they're going to find out the hard way that that's not how the World Trade Organization works. And there is no way that they're going to allow Britain to pick and choose who has uh, preferred nation status with. It doesn't work that way. It's actually the reverse of that. It's designed to prevent you from having a favourite. So that is another issue altogether. All now, uh, in my post bag this week, there was a comment from a person who'd never contacted me before. It was an email, and he claimed, oh, not claimed, but he was worried about, as he put it, um, the language of some independence supporters, some fundamentalist independence supporters, and the way they described no voters in the past. And he felt that this was going to put off anybody converting to uh, become a yes voter. Now, I don't know what you think of that, but I know that from my own experience of doing this show and meeting people afterwards, uh, I've met countless people on the street, people who recognise me, who watch this show, and they all say the same thing. That I don't go and call people yuns and I don't call them bags and I don't make up names to describe people who haven't voted yes. And this has to become the way in which we speak to people about independence because if we continue to call them names, if we continue to try and make fun of them and mock them, they're never going to become one of us. They can't be because we're actually pushing them away and pushing them away verbally. Uh, it's not a nice thing to do. Now I know that there are many devoted, hard-working independence campaigners out there and they were out there again on Saturday, giving up their Saturday at Buchanan Street Steps to set up a massive yes stall, to get people converted, to sell some merchandise in aid of the cause, but to talk to people, to talk to people about why they should not uh, vote to stay in the UK, why they should not stay with the UK through Brexit, why independence is going to be better for Scotland and how Scotland can make its own decisions and make its own trade deals. Now these are the people that we need to convert, the people on the street who maybe never thought about this before but they're looking at everything that's happening around them with Brexit and they're worried and they're quite naturally worried, they're scared about what the future holds. So we need to convince them not only that a future with independence is going to be at least as good, it needs to be better. It needs to be better than Brexit, better than London rule, and it needs to be secure. They need to feel safe. Their savings must be secure. Their pensions must be uh, guaranteed. They must be higher pensions. The NHS needs to be secure. Jobs need to be secure with shipyards, with whiskey industry, with our energy industry. We need to tell them the good news about what independence means. It means we control all of that. And we now have another uh, scare story which people will run a mile from, and that is now that Ineos, the fracking company, is taking the Scottish Government to court over its, um, its permanent moratorium on fracking and unconventional gas e exploitation in Scotland. Now if they do this and they're successful and they challenge the, the ban in court, they could have it overturned. If it's overturned, which looks like it would be likely if it went to um, the High Court in England, if it went to that, that's the Supreme Court, if they decided against the Scottish Government, then any of us would be allowed to frack under the fields and under the towns of central Scotland. The SNP have not manufactured that situation themselves. They've not, they've not encouraged fracking, quite the opposite. They've prevented it from happening ever since the, the push for fracking was announced.
But if we don't vote for independence, that fracking will go ahead. Because if you're independent and you're a nation state, then energy is no longer a reserved matter to Westminster. You have control over your oil fields, over your gas fields, over your coal mines. And you can say to companies like Ineos, no, you're not fracking in this country. 99% of the population of Scotland voted against it and we're not going to let you do it. If you lose money through it, tough luck, sue the British government because they are the ones who issued the licences to you. But my point here is, this is another selling point. Ineos is doing independence a gigantic favour by taking the Scottish government to court and threatening to start fracking. Because now we know that there's a possibility that fracking definitely will happen if they win this battle in court. And I think the Scottish government knows that it will probably eventually be defeated in the Supreme Court because the Scottish government doesn't have the power over um, over the energy uh, matters in the United Kingdom at all. It's used its powers over um, environmental issues and safety issues to prevent fracking from happening by forcing the companies to demonstrate that it's safe, which they can't do because they know it's not safe. But the point is the British government doesn't care about safety and the environment. They're pushing fracking. And if we stay with Britain, if we stay with Britain through Brexit and beyond, the Tories will let Ineos frack in hundreds or thousands of locations all over Scotland and the UK. And frankly, that's another threat. It's a threat to the value of your house. It's a threat to the fact that you might not even be able to get your home insured if you're in a fracked area. There are all sorts of nasty things there. Now that threat is something which will definitely convert a lot of middle class, middle income people whose houses are in the central belt right slap bang in the middle of this fracking license area. These are ways that we can talk to people about independence. The benefits of it, they don't need to be flag waving, salt air waving, kilt wearing Scots to vote for independence. They just need to see the dangers. The language that we use when we're speaking to people must be the same as it would be when we're speaking to our families. We don't call people names, we don't wind them up, uh, we don't belittle their ideas, we don't ask them which football club they support or what religion they are or what country they come from. The point is, they live here, they have a right to vote in the referendum and we need to respect their other opinions as well. But we have far more to fight with this time than we've ever had in the past. Now we don't need to manufacture project fear. The British government, its Brexit plans and its plans to frack Scotland have produced their own fear. We haven't needed to manufacture it. It exists already. And all we have to do is explain to people that if they become independent, if they vote with us, fracking will not happen here. It just will not happen. Any of us could be kicked out, Grangemouth could be bought out and nationalised, the whole oil platforms all of the oil fields and the pipelines could be brought back into Scottish control. We would have the power to do that. We have zero power at the moment. We are passengers along for the ride in Brexit just now. And until we convert enough people, we are stuck like that. But the fact that so many people are out campaigning at the moment, there are so many meetings, public stalls, people are talking about it in the pubs, people are wearing yes badges again, and more and more folk are coming in to watch shows like this, they're looking for information. And information is difficult to come by, and the social media that we work in, the BBC and the other national press are trying to undermine the credibility of it by saying that we produce fake news. Now all of the things I've said to you today are factual. Everything that you have heard out of my mouth can be checked. The, um, the rules of the World Trade Organization are published. Look up things like um, preferred nation states and things like that. That will explain it all. Look at the newspapers from London and you'll see this headline about so-called SNP Rex Brexit deal. It's a load of garbage, as we know. All of that is factual, okay? It's come from the British media and it's come from uh, well-known, established, factual sources. I don't pedal lies and I don't make up the news. The comments are my own and as you know uh, I tend to analyse things and try and look below the surface at what's really going on. But what I'm seeing now and what I saw on Friday night when I was out with my family for an evening at the Bon Accord 
was a hell of a lot of people who are now excited again about the independence that we can now achieve. Brexit is a gift that will keep giving to Scotland for the next year or so. It's giving us the chance now to show the people of Scotland that we have a chance to break away from the disaster that's being planned in London at the moment. And that disaster wasn't of our making, we didn't vote for it, we didn't vote for the government there, we didn't vote for Brexit either, we didn't vote for Mundell to take over Scotland and we didn't vote for those 111 powers to be retained in Westminster and we certainly never voted for fracking to happen. All of that stuff will happen if we stay with the UK. If we're independent, it will not happen because nobody here w would vote for it and nobody has voted for it. Whatever relationship we have with Europe after Brexit would be better if we're independent because we can negotiate whatever deal we like with Europe. We are not tied to the stupid red lines about immigration. We're not tied to any other red lines about customs unions. We would be independent of London and we could do whatever deal we wanted with Europe. It could be a far better deal even than we've got at the moment. We could be full members. We could be part of the European Free Trade Association with Switzerland and Liechtenstein and, uh, and Norway. We could trade into Europe without being members if we wanted. We could still have uh, all the integration of universities. We could still have um, a freedom of movement and we could still have a customs union so we don't constantly have to stop things at customs checks and slow the process down and pay tariffs on everything. That could be history. Everything that I've said today, you should be saying out there on the street when people ask you, why should I vote for independence? Tell them, because if you don't, you'll be fracked. If you don't, prices are going to rise. If you don't, we're going to lose our export orders and businesses will close. If we don't, your children will have to migrate to find work somewhere else. If we don't, we won't be able to go on cheap holidays to Spain. It'll take months to get visas. It'll cost a fortune to fly there. Not so many flights will be going. The rules for aircraft will be changing. We might not see so much air traffic. So many things can go wrong. Health service will suffer. Everything will suffer. Brexit is one of those terrifying prospects that is so complicated, you don't even want to think about it. There's so many things that will need to change. Thousands and thousands of things about safety, uh, about drugs, about uh, medicines, about everything that you can think of in your life at the moment that is currently done through the, the European Union will have to be changed. And there are no guarantees that the Tories will do a better job of it. In fact, you can almost guarantee they will do a worse job of it. So I will leave you with those thoughts, but remember, there's plenty of ammunition out there for us to use when we're converting people, and we certainly do not need to call people names. We just need to explain the risks to them and show them that once we have our country under our own control, we can decide what we do. We can decide how we trade, we can decide who gets to frack and who doesn't, and we can decide if, if we want to change our relationship with Europe, we could come up with a better relationship. We might want to stay out of Europe, we don't know that, but the point is, if we as Scots get to vote about it and to discuss it more fully, we'll come up with a better way of relating to Europe. It doesn't have to be Brexit don't have to be out of the, the European Union, we don't have to trade under the WTO rules, we can come up with something better I'm sure. Anyway I've rambled on long enough, I hope you all have a nice Sunday, I'm off to do one more lesson and then I'm going home for my dinner, but uh, as usual contact me in the normal way after the show if you have any other ideas or comments. Talk to you soon, have a good weekend, bye for now.